Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup. This is the Linux edition. We're going to be looking at just a couple of small Linux news, slow week in Linux. And uh, we did identify one major problem. I don't think there's a lot of journalism anywhere these days, including Linux. Uh, every story we were trying to talk about, the Run Zero situation, basically all I found is rehashes of the uh, press release. I know there's been some people that don't like the Run Zero situation. I just couldn't find any official commentary. And being as that I'm not like a deep embedded coder or like a deep embedded uh, maintainer of a project, the slight subtleties on them are going to be slightly lost on me a little bit. I will do the best I can to get into it. But hey, we're jumping the gun. Let's go ahead and start with our first story uh, dealing with Raspberry Pis. If you are using Raspberry Pis, you know you get one of them, you throw it in a little box, and they're like little rabbits. They breed and they multiply. And before you know it, I got four Raspberry Pis built into the walls, and I got three other ones floating about in this tiny van. Now, of course, most of my Raspberry Pis have actual real jobs that they do, so... It's good that they're breeding like bunnies, but how do you manage and access and maintain all of these Raspberry Pis? Hey, the 5 has a power button on it, finally. That's great news. Although you could get an external one for the previous versions, but, um, you know, whatever it happens to be. So managing them can become a little bit difficult, but now they have a built-in remote control access tool. Now, uh, it says built-in. It's not really built-in as much as it is a uh, piece of software available on the Raspberry Pi repo. It is explicitly opt in you have to explicitly install it and the reason they do that is because it can allow you to access your raspberry pis via the internet and they don't want to have that as a uh, default security risk and so it's there for those that need it and what you would do is you would install the package now this has to be done on the raspberry 4 uh raspberry pi 4 uh 400 or the five and it is uh, and you have to be running the Raspberry Pi OS based on bookworm uh, because this requires the Wayland session which is the default in the bookworm Raspberry Pi OS and it is a package that you need to install and uh, if you enter the Raspberry stall connect uh, let's see the exact command uh, enter Raspberry Pi Connect, a new built-in tool for the Raspberry Pi from everywhere. You can open a browser, whether you control it yourself or provide remote assistance on Raspberry Pi 4, 5, or 400 kit. You install it with a single terminal command, root the Pi, uh, reboot the Pi, and then click the new system tray for Raspberry Pi ID, and then if, enable two-factor authentication. They don't actually tell us what the command is here, do they? Um, it's, uh, I think it's just Pi Connect or something. Um, let me let me go ahead and click this guy here. I read like four different articles. I thought I picked the best one. Usually I pick the one that has all the information. So here's the actual documentation, Raspberry Pi Connect. Uh, so just make sure it's upgraded. It's um, uh, uh, RPI-Connect is what you're going to do. And then you reboot the Pi. And then once you do that, you'll have a system tray icon for it. And what you're going to need to do is head on over to the website. Uh, I guess this one's probably going to be the best website picture. I should have just pulled up the original documentation instead. So you're going to go to the, their website, which is the Raspberry Pi. Um, hold on, it's over here. It's going to be the connect.raspberrypi.com. This goes to a website where you can go online, you can sign up, and then you can set your Raspberry Pi ID through that. And now anywhere you can go online, you can use the online interface. Now, what it tries to do is the program itself doesn't always go out to the internet. It first checks the local network. So if you're doing this on your local network and your Pi is on the local network, it's going to make a direct connection to the local network through the software application. But if it can't find it on the local network, then it goes out to the internet to find and connect to the Pi. And so they do have some good security or and uh, privacy built into it. They also say that they do not keep any data except that which is required to make the connection feature work. I believe they say in here they don't even keep the IP address. They just need to keep like the Pi Meta ID and uh, that's about it. 
So it's, it actually looks very well done from the privacy and security front as well. Of course, it does require the internet connection, but this is really great if you have a Raspberry Pi doing something somewhere else uh, that goes wonky or something. As long as it's still somewhat working and connected to the internet, you can get in there and do whatever you need to do to it. So this is a really good tool for people, and I think that they've implemented this really well. Uh, it's not on there by default. You have to explicitly install it. Uh, once you sign up for the service, it tries to do everything locally before going to the internet. I think they've done everything right here for uh, what the Raspberry Pi is. So uh, this is great, and it comes back to uh, bring some more positive back to the Pi, you know, maybe since that whole Microsoft repo issue, which I believe they have reversed. If I, uh, I haven't checked for a while. I haven't run Raspberry Pi OS in a while, but I actually think they took that off from Backlash, at least on some of the Pi uh, OS versions. All right, next, uh, Google layoffs inject some doubt into Ubuntu's Flutter investment. This isn't really impacting. I think this is just, hey, let's do a news article about a shift over at Google. What this has to do with is companies do what companies do, and they're trying to uh, get more revenue coming in. And so they start laying people off who make more money. And basically what Google effectively did is they shifted their developers working on Flutter from United States developers who have to pay a lot more into third world country developers where they pay a lot less. But so ultimately this isn't an issue. Now Flutter, of course, uh, Ubuntu is making use of Flutter. Uh, the new installer is based on Flutter and the new Snap Store is based on Flutter. And there's a few other things they're doing with Flutter as well. So this is a, a Google project, and we know how much uh, Google likes to pretend it's Christy Gnome with its various projects. And so with that being said, there is some concern about Ubuntu investing so heavily in Flutter, especially when Google's doing mass layoffs. So in this case, it looks like uh, it looks like um, uh, Mr. Cricket Flutter is going to survive to live another couple of days, at least for now, uh, because all that happened here is that Google laid off 200 core people which were from Flutter, Python, Dart teams, but it wasn't that they were just sh they were just laying them off and closing those divisions. They were laying those people off and then shifting the jobs to India and Mexico. And the uh, the manager in charge of these projects has said, oh, we're just doing it to lower the wages, you know, make more money on it effectively, but the projects are not actually going anywhere. So can Mexican or Indian developers do as good of a job? There's the question. And uh, what is now for Ubuntu? Ultimately, I'm not sure this is going to impact them very much at all. Ubuntu is flexible enough that if they do notice a real problem with Flutter, they'll probably move on to a different platform. For you know, maybe Rust that's what everybody's moving to these days. Now, they did actually adjust though the 2024 roadmap that Linux seems to have taken a back seat over mobile and web platforms. So, maybe there is a little bit of cause concern, or maybe Ubuntu will be like, Hey, we'll throw a couple people over there to help you out. Who knows? So, that's what's going on with Ubuntu and Flutter. And System D looks to replace sudo with run zero. And I think that this is a solution looking for a problem. Uh, effectively, the the creator of uh, System D, Leonard, po uh, is it Potering? Uh, or is it Poetering? Or is it uh, Poetering? I don't know. Uh, or is it uh, Lynette Potter? Harry Potter? Um, whatever. Uh, I do not know how to pronounce his last name. My apologies for that. Uh, creator of... Uh, of system D has said they are going to have an alternative to pseudo called run D. Now run D is just a sim of system D run, which allows you to run the, um, allows you to run a, a process as a different user ID. So remember pseudo, what pseudo is going to do is it is like super user do. So it elevates to full administrative privileges. Well, system D runs on as the, the first service after the kernel. And so what run zero is going to do is instead of running it as an elevated 
administrative pull, full super user or root user, what it's going to do is it's going to run it as a system D user instead, which is effectively the same exact thing. Now the creator of system D here, Lenart says that this solves some of the fundamental problems with sudo. Of course, you know, sudo RMRF no preserve root uh, does kill your system. Uh, presumably run zero may not, but I don't know. Uh, as far as what is the major distinction I was not able to find anything. I think I've read about 15 or 20 articles on this. Every single one of them is simply a press release on this. Nobody at all had a counterpoint, despite a few people in the comments saying, eh, I don't think so. But nobody could give me a solid answer. So it kind of goes back to that same, say some days at MSA backdoor. Can you prove it? No, it just is. Uh, okay. <laughs> all right, Junior. <laughs> So, um, effectively, now we just have a second way to get compromised. Now, here is one of the things I thought of off the top of my head. The problem we have is uh, sudo moves beyond systemd. It's just, hey, I'm a full root administrative privileged user and I'm doing whatever I want to do. Run zero says I'm running as a systemd user, which may be a distinction without a difference. Except remember that systemd is so convoluted, that whole XZ bug only was happening because system D is so convoluted that system D had to be running on the system for that XZ bug to actually do anything. This is why Arch wasn't impacted by it, even if the code made its way in, because even if Arch uses system D, it does not use the same exact processes because you can select which processes you're allowing system D to run. And if you're just full-fledged system D, do everything, and you are going to raise a couple of concerns doing that. And so that really is one of those things is that elevating into the the chief primary user of system D could carry with it more unintended consequences than not. And that's, I think, what some people are getting at. But as far as specific examples, I wasn't able to find anybody with any actual counterpoints. Hence, journalism is dead. Um, nobody is actually saying, hey, this is good. All right, let me find a couple people who disagree, who are experts in this field, and let me write a counterbalancing opinion. If you have that counterbalancing opinion, please send it to me. I would really love to read it. I scoured the internet for such a thing and all i got is the exact same article reporting on the exact same thing so obviously he thinks run zero is more superior than sudo other people say sudo is more superior i would really like to know an exact comprehensive uh why is this better why is that better why is this worse why is that worse uh and when we can find all that information we can actually make the better more informed choices so that is kind of my thoughts, and uh, let me know your thoughts about those and the other Linux stories. If you want to help support the channel, we do have a Patreon page, patreon.com slash T-O-M-M. You can jump in on over there. Uh, you can get our short stories. Uh, our next one should be coming out. Well, it should be on time. I meant to write some today, and I just didn't have the chance. I had to do some other errands and work with another client. So, uh, But I have one chapter left that's on my original plan, but I'm thinking about adding another couple chapters into it as well. I don't know. But uh, our last short story did come out late. That was Central Bank Digital Control. That is still, if you're a supporter on any one of our networks, you can still download the audiobook of that until, I think, the end of the month. Um, did I put that? Yeah, I think I put that until the end of May. So you can download that or you can go back and read any of those. So uh, you can go ahead and um, look at those on our uh, Patreon page, patreon.com slash T-O-M-M. With that, thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.